because then everybody comes home from work and kids are home from school and then they jump on and they're streaming video games in the neighborhood. I think it just really, that's Precious. what it works. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. Well, that would keep you from working in the evening though. That's, so that's good. That's true. It just, if I do have to host a virtual science club or something, I'll have to do it from the office, but Susan is going to do it next week when Trixie's on vacation. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to actually turn my video off too. I think that's a good idea. I can share the screen for the committee meeting agenda if you want. I emailed it out. I can I can share it. I, I think I yeah. have it somewhere. Yeah, okay. I've got it. Oh, host for has disabled screen share. I did. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't mean to. That's okay. Yeah, it's it's a default setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I made somebody a co-host, Trixie and mm -hmm. Nicholas. All right. The good news is not a very long meeting today, probably. Probably not. Okay, dokey. There we go. Why is it showing? Whoever whoever is doing it, I'm seeing the agenda on the screen now. Okay, good. I'm trying to. Okay, there we go. For some reason, it keeps hiding who's in the call for me, so I can't see how many people have joined. <laughs> My participants list isn't working. Cool. Okay, go w wiggle wiggle your thing and go up to the top and look and hit view and view. do like side by side gallery or side by side ah there it is okay <laughs> yeah there we go all right will we will we crash your internet heather if we turn on our videos i don't think so i think it's just me and okay. Right now I okay. seem pretty stable. I just had a, like one little issue at the beginning. Okay. Okay. Okay, Trixie, you can start whenever you want. Okay. So um, this meeting is recorded or recording, excuse me. Um, so today is November first. Um, what we're going to go over um, according to the agenda is basic registration, donation, um, engineering day, which is an event Hannah and I attended last week. Uh, social media, and then I also added one more thing uh, for Virtual Science Club. Um, so for Facebook registrations, uh, we have one judge, five schools, five teachers, and six project accounts um, registered. There is one pending review um, in the in the box. Um, as of Facebook, like um, social media, and and just getting it out there. Uh, Facebook was mentioned at the engineer's fair uh, last Thursday and has consistently been mentioned on social media platforms and our monthly newsletter. Um, I'll be working on the newsletter uh, later today and then I'll should be um, out through email later this evening when everyone gets back from school and work. And that's typically the best time. Um, usually it's like 6.30, 7 o'clock is when I post it so people have time to actually review it. Um, so that's what we have for SESA. Um, and then Kim just went over the, the grant um, recently. So other than that, that's what yes. I have for SESA. Is, is everybody hearing clearly? Is it just me? No, she's a little ragged. I'm having trouble. Oh, you can hear her, but I had to turn it up a bit. But barely. It's real okay, fuzzy and staticky. Is that better? A little bit. Um, Let's see. 
It sounds like your microphone is coming through your laptop, not your headphones. Yeah, I'm connected to my laptop. Is that better? Yeah, that's a little better, yeah. but maybe go into your Zoom settings and turn up your volume in your Zoom settings. Okay, one second. Yeah, it's still, you sound real distant. Well, while she's working on that, thanks everybody for their input into the uh, ISAF grant. Hopefully we'll get that. I don't know. I don't know what the competition level is anymore um, because they um, we have we've received it once. So I don't know if we'll get it again or not. But, you know, it, it, it we're not going to get it if we don't try. So, yeah, <clears throat> so I tried to really focus what we ask on outreach and equity. So I think you did a good job with it. And um, I, I think that we actually could really benefit from doing a little bit more of that type of outreach. So I hope I hope they agree. Me yeah, too. And they, the, their instructions did not actually did say to go ahead and apply anyways, if you'd gotten it before. Yeah. If I remember if I read it right. So I think they want to have recurring funds if there's a need. I, it, the, the bottom line is the uh, application page has somebody's name on it. So I think it's an endowment. Okay. Is this better? Much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now everything's synced up. Okay. Okay. Uh, so is there anything? I'll just go over the SASEF registration real quick. Um, okay, so SASEF registrations, we do have one judge, five schools, five teachers, and six accounts um, present. There is one other uh, project that needs to be reviewed. Um, so as a SASEF, um, oh, sorry, I need to review. So as of SASEF um, outreach, uh, we did have the engineering sphere last Thursday. Um, and so there was a lot of uh, teachers um, that were that have sent students through SASEF and have heard of our programs, um, and they're very interested in just learning more about it. Um, the demographic we had last week was high schoolers, so ninth through twelfth grade, um, and there was about eighteen hundred students that came by. Now, not I'm sure not every student came by our particular uh, tent, um, but you know it is. Um, it was mentioned. Uh, SASEF has also been mentioned in our social media platforms um, and our monthly newsletter. Um, the monthly newsletter usually comes in the first week of every month and around 6.30, 7 o'clock so that everyone um, is at home and can typically take a, take a gander at it. All right, so anything else regarding SASEF anyone wants to mention? Comments, concerns? Where were we at last year? Do we know in terms of people signing up at this point? Are we ahead or behind? Um, I can look at archives. It usually is not very good yet. I mean, okay. Okay. you have oh. you have yeah. maybe a couple of teachers and any student who's going to do a really serious project with um, human subjects is usually sent it in by now. But very, very few. All right. Trixie, there is something we used last year, and you can just change the dates on it. I'll send it to you, but it we can just add the numbers as we go every month. Okay. Just and a quick little snapshot of their numbers, you mean? Yes. Yeah, it okay. says how many we had last year and how Five many years. we have this year, so we kind of know where we're at. Okay. I just wanted to confirm, because we talked about this last time, that we reserve hotel rooms for ISEF. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer would be doing that with the, uh, with the credit card. But ISEF 23 registration is not open yet, right? 
I don't think so. Um, while we talk, I'll go through my old emails and make sure that's not, that's true. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. And a quick Google only shows me 2022. So as soon as it's open, I'll reserve us some rooms for 23. Okay, so uh, moving on, we have donations. Heather, do you mind? Not at all. Um, I just wanted to reassure you guys I was going to do a second round of letters early uh, December before I go on vacation. Um, I'm happy to do that. And then Jennifer will have to connect. Um, so if you have a running spreadsheet or something of who has donated, um, there is the working spreadsheet in the SACEF shared Google Drive um that I got addresses from and things like that so uh we can connect and I can find out who has donated and not bombard them with more letters yeah that's great I did not know that there was a running spreadsheet in the google drive I have my records spreadsheet that I keep so I'll go into that sponsor spreadsheet and update it we're we've only gotten six donation so far so we're we're a little low right now um our grand total is three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars so far um but i'm i know that'll pick up it, it always does so thanks for sending the second round of letters and i will update that other spreadsheet if you would like you can just share your or send your spreadsheet to me and i can update it i'm totally happy to do that well it's um, only six people so it won't take yeah. very long <laughs> <laughs> and heather I'm happy to pick up letters and write notes on them again if you want to meet up, okay. meet up and do that. Just let me know. Sure, that would be great. Um, it's in the, I think I put it in the 2023 since it's the 2023 fair mm -hmm. um, is the folder that it should be in. If you have a hard time finding it, just let me know. Um, I found it. And if there's any adjustments to the wording in the letter, um, you know, let me know and we can adjust the letter before they go out, before it goes out again. And that's all I have. Anybody have any questions about that? It does include two um, additional pieces, <clears throat> the special awards and the um, benefits of donation, I think is what it's titled. So that does go out in the email as links and it does go out in the paper letters as well. That's all I have. Jennifer, do you have anything else you want to add? On donations? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I think we're good. Perfect. Um, so we touched on uh, Engineering Day a little bit. So again, a good turnout. It was um, 1,800 students. Um, all of UT came out. Um, it, it was focused on engineering, um, healthcare, and, and pre-college, obviously. Um, and so there were, were there were many interested teachers that came by. Um, they snapped a shot of our newsletter uh, QR code. Um, you know, we'll see if the numbers have increased since then. Um, but um, again, they do have heard of our programs and have pushed our student their students, excuse me, um, to participate. Um, and so I think a lot of teachers are more excited that I want to say the COVID is lifted per se, but um, there are more opportunities to interact um, and do in-person um, events. So it looks promising, but of course, you know, our numbers are not gonna really show until what, a week before it happens. <laughs> um, and so all of a sudden we're gonna go, you know, from two to like 70 or something like that. And everyone just crams all their uh, registrations in. Um, yeah, so that's what we had on engineering day. Um, all right, so moving on to social media, uh, we're mostly active on Instagram and Facebook. Um, again, we do have the monthly newsletter, um, and I work on that. Um, again, I will be working on that today, and then we'll be sent out later this evening. Um, your, uh, it's usually on a monthly basis do, that I promote 
our programs um, just so that I don't flood people with emails. Um, I do flood people with emails with re regarding virtual science club, but it looks like it's working. Um, <laughs> um, I do have numbers about um, virtual science club. Um, so we'll look into that in just a second. Um, but yeah, it, it seems like people are picking up and, and noticing um, noticing our programs more often. Um, and they're very excited that they're, we're coming off of COVID times where everything is virtual. Um, so it's, it's looking promising. Um, all right, anybody have input on social media? Any suggestions? Okay, perfect. All right, whizzing through uh, Virtual Science Club. So we started off very well <laughs> in our first meeting. Um, I'm gonna go over the registered and then the attended um, and the attendance rate overall for each uh, for our past meetings. However, um, I don't harp too much on the intended numbers because they tend to fluctuate um, because our tracking system through Slate um, sometimes doesn't always catch who actually attended. Um, only if they actually registered, but um, sometimes people use different emails um, when they register versus when they actually come into the meeting. Um, but so going back on September the 13th, uh, we had 60 registered. So that was pretty high up there. Um, according to Slate, we had 25 attended. So that's a 42% attendance rate. On the 27th of September, we had 38 registered. 17 attended, so that's 45 att attendance rate. Um, on the 4th of October, we had 25 registered, 19 attended, so that's 76% attendance rate. Um, and then uh, last week, we had 25 registered and 17 attended with a 68% attendance rate. So it looks like we have majority of people registered and then about half-ish um, actually attend. And again, that may fluctuate depending on what email they use to log in to Zoom. Um, overall, I do believe that we have a consistent group. Um, with exception of last week, they weren't very talkative. <laughs> Not sure why, but you know, kids will be kids. Um, but I do think that the mentors and the guest speakers are great this year, and I do hope to gain more traction after the holidays. So um, that is what I have for uh, virtual science stuff. Does anyone have any comments that you want to present? Oh, I got... oh, go ahead. I haven't heard about the winner to get the prize from last oh, Tuesday. Yes, yeah, sorry. I have um, a working, I just put this together. So um, I have a working uh, link for the, um, for the winners and it's also going to be on the Google Drive. So I'll send that link to you specifically, Jennifer. So that way, um, when I am gone next week, um, if either Heather or Susan can just add that name um, and you can either send us an email through prep or just check the Google sheet. Um, that way it has uh, name, address, um, and their prize, and of course, um, who they are. I also realized, <laughs> when I um, added all the people together that um, Zoe and Seth both got. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I realized that because I was like, why is email so familiar? And then I was like, oh, it's brother, sister. Okay, yeah. Got it. Um, so, you know, at least now we, I mean, technically it's not the same person per se, but yeah, um, I do use the random number sheet and then make sure that whoever I pick is actually still present in the meeting and, and make sure that they, you know, either say something in the chat or verbally say, hey, I'm here. Um, so they're not just going to a ghost person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Nicholas, did you have a comment? I'm, I'm going to ask if we knew for the last meeting, if that was anybody's um, fall break. Mm, I don't know. I, I know that we did have a gap because it was either the second or third week of October. Um, and we're doing yeah. the same thing for November as well. We'll have one um, next week and then towards the end of November as, after Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. As far as I know, um, from the events that I've had, fall break spans the entire month of October. <laughs> okay. Different schools across the state. So it's really 
you know, the bulk of them are like the second and the third week of October, but there are some every single week. So, you know, it's unless we just cancel the whole month. We're well, no, no. Yeah. Into that, I know. So that probably does have something to do with it. I was just wondering I mean, that it in, was impacting the attendance a little bit because it okay. seemed like I saw the same core that we always, we typically see, but some of the newer people weren't present, at right. least from my recollection. I so mean, I was kind of wondering if maybe they were from other parts of the state that had a shifted fall break or something. I mean, it makes sense because um, our first meeting, you know, was after they got back to school, they're off of summer, they're excited. Um, and then of course, you know, the bulk of school has started and then people's breaks. Um, so I don't anticipate large numbers for November just because, you know, people fluctuate with breaks and going to vacation, of course. And then the last weekend or second to last weekend regarding um, Thanksgiving. So I hope, like I said, after the new year, we have a little bit more traction, um, especially mm -hmm. moving into our program. So one of the things that's been going through my mind because I was thinking about T-shirts because I was writing <laughs> that grant. Um, should we have a virtual science club t-shirt and that after you attend X number of things, you can apply to get a t-shirt? Cool. I think they would do that. It's always nice to incentivize people. Yeah. Now, would that go to just like prize winners or like everyone that, that attends? That would go to everyone that attends. So that would incur mailing cost as well. Mailing um, cost and also a whole lot of, uh, bookkeeping to know yeah. who has actually been there that many times. It <laughs> sounds a little labor intensive, but yeah. What what I was thinking is we could have them apply and then we could check. So we wouldn't be checking everybody all the time. But the other option would be if they are a virtual science club attender, then they come to the science fair, they get a t-shirt. So uh -huh. you know that works well for all this for the SACEF folk. That doesn't work as well for the other science fair right. attendees. Is the is the challenge there? Right. But if they go, I mean, we could always have it. Like, if you go to a science fair and you can provide registration evidence, we can send you the thing yeah. too. Yeah, that could that could address the other ones. So the ones that are in person at SACEF, we could just give you the T-shirt, and the ones that are outside of the SACEF region if they provide us a copy of their registration we could send it i don't actually it's not a bad idea we could make that work that would that would be less bookkeeping susan yeah it would definitely <laughs> but um, are you also planning to do say t-shirts <laughs> well that was my that was my thought we missed the 70th anniversary i realized when i was writing the grant um that it was last year Whoa. um so we don't we're not i had this I had this wonderful grant proposal based on the celebration of the 70th year that I had to rewrite all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I think that uh, if we get that money, we'll have money for, I think it's 350 t-shirts. I finally ended up with the budget. Um, if we don't, and we get in our normal numbers of donations, then we still have, you know, Jennifer's been, managed to pay all of our bills without dipping into that 10 grand. So we could have t-shirts. In the past, we've sold t-shirts at the fair. I, um, and that was a money maker. It wasn't, didn't, wasn't a huge one. But um, if we don't get the grant and we make t-shirts, you know, we might be able to do that. Um, I don't know. We, and let me, I can also look around for um, small grants that we could possibly get the money to just do the t-shirts for the virtual science SACIF or, or other science fair connection. So if anybody sees, you know, you know. I wonder um, if we could get one of the t-shirt folks at, in Knoxville to donate some as like in-kind donation, do a t-shirt donation instead? Or is that a challenge? It's probably a challenge because yeah. I suspect that they're running on the edge of their economic margins right now. 
And they do yeah. so many t-shirts for nonprofits and stuff that I, I don't think, I think it's like asking a tent, uh, you know, people that rent out the tents for events get the same thing all the time, wanting people to donate them. And they are like, absolutely not. Yeah. Now we may be able to get a donation in kind, just that they give us a certain percentage off. Yeah. So if they yeah. give us a, you know, if they, even if they give us a 10% discount, that and the fact that we don't have to pay tax is, you know, yeah. is significant. And 10% is probably within, they're still making profit. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, the, the, the thing, though, that would have to come up before we did any of this is we would have to come up with um, a virtual science club logo or some kind of T-shirt. or um, So it might be worth finding a graphic artist and getting some mm -hmm. getting some designs that we can have in the background if we need it we might have some kids who have some ideas uh, and they, ooh, they might like to give us their ideas and then we could have a designer you know make them look nice but uh, i think it would be fun to ask the kids what they'd like to see on the shirt that's that's a great idea um we could even make that the zoom background it, in the mentors meetings. Yeah. That would um, be fun. Branding is always a good idea. Yeah. So maybe, maybe after the fair is over, we have one more virtual science club meeting and we say, if you want to come and participate on discussions for logos, or if you want to submit one, uh, submit it by that time. That'd be a good that, idea. That gives us one more meeting. <laughs> I just need one more meeting. We can do that. Um, I know that I'm the one who always rains on the parade when it comes to logos <laughs> because I get in trouble. Um, right. It might be something that could be used for a t-shirt or something not tied to UT, but if it's going to be used as backgrounds or stuff like that, I think we might run into trouble uh, because they try to keep the branding uniform. And so if I requested a logo, it would come back at me just standard UT logo. So um, I think we could probably still do that and use it for t-shirts, but using it for everything probably won't work. <laughs> okay. Do you think, Susan, they, so they won't approve another logo if they have input into it? They will, they will, be, like I said, for like t-shirts or something, yeah. but like even GSSE, I had come up with a nice clean logo for, for governor school that was within all the branding colors, followed everything. And they did not take that one. They, oh, okay. they go with the standard power T and the unit or the, you know, the name of the thing. So I, it's, it's just hard to say. I think we could use it for some things, but we couldn't use it for everything. Yeah. Well, those those of us who are not at UT could use it in their background, but those of us at UT could. Well, I mean, I think we could to. even use it as in a background. I just mean like for any other type of, we can't use it as the official logo for Virtual Science Club, likely. <laughs> Okay. If we're affiliated with it, it's just complicated because you guys are your own thing, but we're also UT. So it's, right. it's hard to figure out what they'll allow us to do in that regard. Cause we've had trouble even I've had trouble with some, like with our next chapter that is tied with 4-H trying to get those things to go together doesn't work. So there's just nothing. So oh, in that case, you're dealing with two branding offices. Because UTIA exactly. has their own branding office. Yes. Exactly. Yep. But the fact, like, if we were still in research, it probably wouldn't matter so much. But since we're in admissions now, I mean, branding is a big deal, as you might imagine. So that's why things yep. have gotten maybe a little more difficult with some of that. But that's not to say we can't do it. We just can't use it for everything. Okay. It, it, yeah, probably is not 
Definitely not letterhead. <laughs> well, and I don't not think we send it. Head, not really, um, not really website. I mean, because they just, they honestly don't want you designing logos at all. That's for communications. <laughs> and they don't everything want to use anything except what they've already done. Everything. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and it makes sense because it's representing the university. They have a brand. It's just like any major corporation would be, you know, they, they have a look, they want to be sure that look is consistent across the whole university and across all of their platforms. So I do get it from the marketing perspective, but it, it kind of stinks, you know, because we want to do what we want and we're not. Right. Able to. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, that doesn't let the kids have creativity that we're wanting to give them. Well, I mean, it does if you're just doing it for a T-shirt. Yeah, if we're doing, if we're going to, if we're going to say we're going to do a virtual science fair T-shirt, and come help us come up with a logo, we'll we'll have one more virtual science club. If you want to participate, uh, either submit something to us by that date, or uh, come and join the conversation. I think that's a good idea. I don't think they'll fault us on a T-shirt. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. they'll want a power T in there somewhere, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Doctor Sasef has his has his power T on his shirt now, thanks to, I think it was Trixie or Susan. I can't remember who finally got it got it on there. And then, uh, so we kind of, you know, we're a joint venture. Yeah. So we have to we have to. I mean, we can't not obey Sasef laws either. Yeah. or ISIF. So we have to, we have to work this, these different ones. And we're also just kind of in the midst of finding out what we are allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. Cause we do partner with other nonprofits as well, uh, like for the symposium and they have their whole own set of branding. Mm -hmm. rules. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'll learn more in the coming weeks and months about what is, how we are able to mix two brands together, what they allow and what they don't. Yeah. You know, the funny thing about it was, is it used to be we weren't allowed to put the UT brand on anything other than what UT did. So it's, uh, so they're, they're changing the, the other way. <laughs> well, I don't even know for sure that they will let me. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming, I mean, we've always just done it ourselves, but like I said, you know, now communications is starting to take some of that back and start doing things um, because they're getting more staff. But, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, we always put the UT logo. We think it should be there because we're hosting these things and that's how we are represented at these events. But I don't officially know yet what they're going to say we can and can't do. So it yeah. may come to that. And to I be honest with I, you, I've never put together the person hours that UT donates to this. So every time Nicholas and I, Bonnie are on these calls, it's that's UT people hours in addition to what you all do, you know, because I, I at sometimes we're, you know, we're 10 percent of your time and other times we're 50 to 60 percent. So, um, you know, we don't want to irritate UT. <laughs> yeah. <so. Ooh. laughs> Definitely not. Okay. All right. Is um, that everything? Yeah, I, that's all I have on for the meeting. Um, if there's anyone who has closing remarks, if not, we can conclude. I have one little extra thing to if Jennifer's still on the call. Um, last month's or last virtual science club winner was Ellie Wu. And she just recently got us her address. She did not include her city though. So it's, I'm sorry, I haven't gotten it to you yet. I need to do a little bit of research. Hopefully she included that in her registration or I'll. Thanks for the info, Heather. That doesn't yeah. surprise me about Ellie. Um, but I, I will keep that in the top of my mind so that um, whenever she does provide that, if you shoot me an email, I will order that for her. Yes, no problem. Sorry, it's taken a little bit, but I 
no Spain worries. Did, and then she emailed out of the blue and said, oh yeah, this is what I want. And <laughs> so, um, you know, teenagers. So yep, no worries. Yep. I will let you know soon though. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to make sure that I don't drop the ball on it. Um, yeah. so yeah, I appreciate your help. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And that's all I have. Um, let me, now that I have it up, um, I'm going to send this to Jennifer. Um, so this is just the Google link for the um, virtual science of the winners. And then, so you'll have that um, on a tracked sheet. Sounds good. Okay. Um, all right. So that concludes our meeting tonight, today, today. <laughs> Sorry. Very I'm four hours of sleep. I have one more night. thing. I yeah, have one more thing to say. Um, I just finished up <clears throat> doing all of our counselor luncheons for um high school counselors across the state. I just oh. had one in Johnson City. And when I was there, um, we have a smaller group there, you know, because it's more rural, but we had 17 counselors come and you know, they gave the admissions presentation update stuff. And then um, we, uh, Clay Alexander asked if there were any questions. And the first one was from a counselor who said, I just want to say how great prep is. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, and she was talking about, she, one of the students, she's from the ETSU uh, school and one of their students went to the nationals with symposium and they're participating in all of our things so including virtual science club so yeah. that was good to hear it's just you know getting that word out to people and it, it's just difficult but um i'm trying to work with our um diversity and inclusion office who has been short staffed for the past entire year who's finally up to staff now full staff so I'm going to try to work with them some too to try to get this pushed out even more broadly so that's it <laughs> um and I awesome. think one of our um most active participants is almost like our own ambassador if anything um Erin Kim so <laughs> She's been in SACEP, mm -hmm. symposium. She went to governor's school. She took all our programs. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I know she has a positive um, feedback and she's always talking about it at school. And, you know, there's, there is a niche when it comes to um, our prep program. So I'm just, I'm glad that students are, students and teachers are, are seeing the benefit of prep, so. Yeah, you um, might want to you but, might want to do an interview with Erin because she's she's very well spoken. Yeah, and that's yeah. something you could put on your, you know, a video that you could put on your site because she yeah. she's if she's done it all and she's won it all. So. Yes. Yeah, I am. Um, I was able. So when we went to New Mexico for the sim national symposium, um, I was there, uh, chaperone, and it was cute because I got to see Erin just Erin versus Erin, the presentation. And it is, it's really is kind of night and day because I was so impressed seeing her speak. I mean, all our students, they're great, but like, you know, I was able to see her as a teenager and then, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, presenter. And I was just kind of like a little proud. I was like, oh, she came from UT, you know, like, and you know, all our students who go places and get money. And when I mentioned to the high schoolers that came through our, um, to our booth, you know, I was like, there is scholarship money waiting for you to be like waiting to be claimed by you. So put in the work, put in the research and get rewarded. And when I told them, like, you know, there's a good amount of people that get enough scholarship to go through the first year of college and whatnot. Um, they're like, wow. And because a lot of people don't have the money to go to school, if there's scholarship opportunities, you know, if they just put effort into it, they can get it. <laughs> Um, okay, for the third time, is that it? I think that's it. All right. I well, everyone, good. have a good day. Thank you so much for coming yeah. by. Thanks. And way to go, prep. Yes. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone.